if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. Just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I'm just going to tell this sleep meditation in the background. And I don't know whether you'll drift deeper with the sound of my words, or whether it'll be with the spaces between my words. And as you comfortably drift asleep, You can just imagine yourself sitting on a beach and the sun has just set below the horizon. You can hear the gentle lapping of the water on the shore. You can notice what the waves look like as they roll in and the sound as they roll back out. And you can see that band of orangey red color near the horizon in the direction the sun has set. And then looking off the opposite direction, you can notice that inky blueness. And you can notice how the air temperature has cooled off a little since the sun set over the horizon. How birds have quietened down in the background. Almost like the world here is gently falling asleep. and noticing a certain stillness and calmness to the air. And finding that you're now the only person left on this beach. And you relax back, just enjoying the experience of lying on that beach. And as that sky gets darker and darker, so more and more stars become visible. And you allow yourself to just sit comfortably in the dark so that your eyes can get used to the dark. And the more your eyes get used to the dark, the clearer you can see those stars. And you relax there. And occasionally you see a shooting star pass across the sky. And then as time goes on, the number of shooting stars that pass across the sky increases. And you watch and wait for tonight's meteor shower. And you know that in just a few hours, it's going to be almost like it's raining meteors. Like that spitting rain that you can get. Where you know it's raining, because occasionally you feel a drop on your skin. And you gaze up at the sky and relax, and you occasionally find your eyes wanting to blink shut. But you keep letting those eyes reopen. And the more you try to keep those eyes open, the deeper and more relaxed you become, and the more those eyes want to shut. 
and it starts your mind thinking about how the brain works sometimes in such a paradoxical way, where the harder you try to do something, the more difficult it becomes. Where you can make something elusive by chasing it. Where if you try to stay awake for a late night film, you're more likely to fall asleep. If you try to fall asleep because you've got to be up early, you're more likely to be stuck awake. And so it is that the more you try to stay awake, watching that meteor shower, the more your eyes want to close and the deeper asleep you want to become. And it's almost like building up a sleep potential. So that just closing your eyes will make you fall asleep. As if your whole body is saying that that's what you want to do. And then, as that meteor shower increases, You watch, and you can almost hear the hissing and the crackling as they shoot across the sky to that regular rhythm of the waves lapping on the shore. And after a few hours of watching the meteor shower, you stand up, you walk down to the seashore, you can smell that salty air. You walk just into the sea, where the waves lap gently across your feet, past your ankles, feeling that cool, relaxing water. Feeling the grains of sand as they move around your feet and tickle between your toes. And you get a few deep, comfortable breaths of the sea air. And you think about how healing the sea air can be. How relaxing being on a calm beach can be. Before you head back up the beach, pack away the chair. And Climb into your tent. And you zip up the entrance to the tent. And relax back in the tent. You can hear the sound of the wind outside. And almost feel that wind. pulsing and relaxing you deeper and deeper inside your mind. And as that wind blows on the tent and that sea rolls gently onto the shore, so your eyes blink a few times as you snuggle down and relax in a sleeping bag, feeling so comfortable and drifting and floating asleep. And while you drift and float asleep, so you begin to dream. And you dream about floating up out of your body and as you float up out of the tent, you notice that the world around you has a calm, almost daylight feel to it. A certain whiteness to the world. Almost like there's a uniform light illuminating this world around you. 
and you notice as you float up above the tent that everything is still, that those waves aren't rolling into the shore, that the distant trees aren't moving, almost like it's a snapshot in time and you float up higher and higher. You find yourself at the height of the clouds and you float through the clouds, finding yourself above them. And then you just think about lowering down to the clouds and as you think about that, so your body lowers down and you land on your feet on those clouds. And as you walk on the clouds, you notice how underfoot the clouds feel almost like a bouncy castle covered in the thickest, fluffiest rug you can imagine. You can feel the softness of that and the springiness of that under your feet. And you can see on this cloud what almost looks like cloud boulders. And you walk over to some of those cloud boulders, almost bouncing along the cloud like astronauts walking on the moon. And you handle one of the cloud boulders and you find that that cloud boulder feels as light as air. Almost like picking up a beach ball. It's so soft, like it's wrapped in fur. And you sit yourself down and rest on that cloud. And you roll around on that cloud. And you feel those cloud boulders that are really just like small clouds. And you know that this is a dream. And you know that your unconscious is just communicating about calmness and relaxation while it educates you and helps you to work on any issues from the day. It's almost like giving that conscious part of you a safe and comfortable place to go while other work is going on elsewhere. Like a waiting room for your consciousness. And so you enjoy bouncing around on the cloud and you find a lake up here in this cloud. And you put your hands in that water. And you notice how blue the water is. And as you rest your hands into the water, so you notice some of the coolness and blueness almost passing through your hands, up your arms, and comforting and healing through the body and just softening and relaxing you. And you notice the temperature and the pressure of that water. You notice how viscous that water feels as you move those hands through the water. And then you see a rowboat and notice that it's floating towards you as if it just appeared on this lake off to one side and has somehow floated into view and you feel this sense that this rowboat is floating your direction for you to climb into it 
And so when that rowboat arrives at you, you climb into it, you push off from the side with one of the oars, and you begin to paddle that boat across the lake. And you don't know what's across the lake, but you just feel this sense of going with the experience, of continuing to travel through this experience. And as you travel across that lake, you can see what looks like a smaller cloud in the middle of the lake, almost like an island in the lake. You row to that island. You get out of the boat of the island. And you see in the middle of this island seems to be a hole going down. And next to it is a sign that says Close your eyes, count down from ten, and then step into this hole. And you feel this deep sense of trusting that this is a safe place for your consciousness. And you're curious. And so you close your eyes, standing at that hole, and you start counting down ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you step into that hole and you drop in that hole and it's like dropping into a water chute, into a water slide. And you travel around that at a comfortable speed, whizzing around, circling around, feeling a sense of almost traveling deeper and deeper inside the cloud traveling through some of that water that spilled from the inside of the cloud into this water chute. And you open your eyes as you're traveling through this chute and you can see the sides passing you by. And then you pop out the end and you splash and slide through some water. And as you look around, you discover that you're actually inside the cloud. And that you can see how the water is being produced. And that there's almost like a sprinkler system in the ground. That seems to be sprinkling down towards the earth. And you can see mechanisms that turn that sprinkler system on and off. You can see that on the dial for the mechanism, there's different settings. There's a setting for just very, very light rain. There's a setting for rain that's a bit heavier. And the settings go all the way up to very, very heavy rain. You can see that there's someone at the front of the cloud and they're controlling the speed of the cloud, how fast they drive this cloud. You can see them talking on a headset with people in other clouds. And they're all synchronizing to make sure that, just like a convoy, they travel at the same rate and speed as each other. And you find this an unexpected discovery. And then you can see someone near the cloud, near one of the 
almost like a window in the side of the cloud. And you watch as they stick their thumb out of the cloud, having licked their thumb. And then they pull their thumb back in again. And you go over and you ask them what they're doing. And they say that they're just checking the wind speed and the wind direction. They like to do it the old-fashioned way, a quick lick of the thumb and stick it outside. They can get an idea of the weather just from that. And you notice that this cloud seems to have so many cogs whirring and spinning to make everything happen, almost like the inside of the cloud is mechanical and just seems so old-fashioned. You imagine that perhaps your brain would have created something a bit more modern. And then someone comes up to you in this cloud and they tell you we're here and you ask where. And they say, just stand over there. And so you stand where they tell you. And they have a lever beside them. And they have to pull part of the lever under their fingers back to the handle, almost as if to release a lock or a brake. And then they pull that lever back into an upright position. And as they do, a trap door beneath you opens up and you fall out the bottom of the cloud. And as you fell out the bottom of the cloud, they tell you that it's okay. You're on autopilot. You'll land in the right place. And as you fall, you instinctively raise your arms out to your side. And you feel yourself flying and gliding and you have this instinctive feeling of twisting and turning your body to direct yourself, and you don't know where you're directing yourself to. And you look down and you try to work out where it is you're heading. But you don't recognise where you are. And you can see this almost misty, low layer of cloud beneath you, hiding much of what's on the ground. And then all of a sudden you have this feeling like you need to bring your arms in. So you bring your arms into your side. You end up with your feet facing the ground. And then you find yourself landing. And as you look around you, you realise you've landed in an old-fashioned telephone box. And you have this sense that this telephone box seems to be in England. And the telephone is ringing. And you look around you from inside the telephone box, just letting that telephone continue to ring while you try and work out where you are and what's just happened. You can hear outside the telephone box people milling around, walking up and down, footsteps on the ground, what sounds almost like a market behind you, with different traders. And in front of you is a dial and a black telephone. And there seems to be almost like a tube sticking out of this telephone. And then a single cone in a handle at the side of the telephone. You pick up that cone, put it to your ear. And you say, hello. And as you say, hello. All you hear back is the rhythmic sound of drumming. And you listen to that drumming. 
and something about the rhythms seems to resonate with you. And you notice how that drumming feels almost hypnotic, almost like you can't stop listening. And as you listen, you notice the rhythms begin to change. They begin to slow down. And you notice it's almost like two separate rhythms at once. And you find, as the rhythms slow down, that you begin to feel even more deeper, relaxed. You notice that your body seems to be slowing down and relaxing. The breathing seems to be deepening and slowing down. And you realize that's happening in time with the drums. And then once it reaches a comfortable level of deep relaxation, the drums stop beating. And as they stop beating, you almost unconsciously place the phone back in place and slowly turn around and exit this phone box. You find yourself walking down a cobbled street. You can see market stalls down this street, people selling fruit, veg, people selling meats, people selling different items of clothing, different fabrics bags, all sorts of items. And you walk down this street and you find your attention drawn to all the bright colours, all the movement. Almost like your attention's becoming overwhelmed with so much to look at and not knowing where to begin. But then one stool catches your eye. Something about it draws you in. You see some twinkling and sparkling. And you notice that the sunlight is managing to creep through the buildings and happens to have illuminated a bowl of water on that stool. And as that water gently moves, so twinkling catches your eye. And you walk towards that twinkling water. And as you get closer, you see somebody who seems to be selling potatoes. They seem to have multiple different varieties of potatoes and different sizes of potatoes. And the way everyone's dressed, you have this sense that this is somehow like Victorian London. And yet there's this person who in his sales pitch to sell the potatoes is shouting out about all the different things you can do with potatoes the different ways you can cook them and selling the health benefits and seeming to tailor their approach to sales to each person as they walk past as if somehow they almost instinctively seem to know what the people walking past would want And so you walk to that potato stall. And the person says, do you want a potato? And you say, not right now, you just somehow felt drawn here. 
and they ask, are you sure? And you say, yes, I'm very sure. I don't want a potato right now. And then they ask, are you sure? And then you start doubting yourself, questioning yourself. You start wondering whether you really are as sure as you thought you were. And just at the moment when they've managed to induce a little confusion in your mind, they hand you a potato and say, come this way. They pull down a velvet piece of material across the front of their stool. They walk you round the back of the stool and down an alleyway, down to a secret door. They look around, then they open that door. They show you into a room. And as they show you into this room, you suddenly realize you're eating that cooked potato that baked potato, just in your hand, almost like an apple. And you're wondering how you'd agreed to have that potato. You don't remember agreeing to it. And you can think to yourself how good they were at what they did. And then they show you through this building they ask you to take a seat. You sit down in a seat. They sit down opposite you and they tell you, this seat is the most comfortable seat you are ever going to sit in. And they tell you to close your eyes as they talk to you. And so you close your eyes and you can hear them beginning to talk. And as they talk, they begin to walk around the room. You can hear their voice from in front of you. You can hear their voice as it moves around the side of you. You can hear their voice as it moves to the back of your head and then moves around the other side. And as you listen to their voice, it's almost like their voice is within your mind, traveling around in your mind. And they tell you to open your eyes just for a moment while you can hear their voice off to the side of you. And you open your eyes. As you open your eyes, you're surprised to discover as you look around that this room now seems to have mirrors all around the walls and on the ceiling, as if somehow you're suddenly in a room full of mirrors. And you can see yourself from all different angles, all different perspectives. And they say, look into your eyes. And just keep looking into your eyes of that you in front of you. And as you keep looking into your eyes of that you in front of you, you're going to notice how the other yous around you begin to fade away. And while those other yous begin to fade away, so you can notice how dark everything around you becomes. And while it all becomes dark, you can reach a point where just you looking at your eyes, where you can just see your eyes and only your own eyes. And as you look at your eyes, floating in that mirror, looking back at you, you can notice how those eyes begin to get heavier and heavier. And while those eyes get heavier, and heavier, they're just going to want to close. 
and when those eyes want to close, don't let them for a while. Allow yourself to really enjoy the process of the eyes wanting to close. They'll want to blink and you'll notice them blink a few times rapidly. And you can let that happen, but really try to keep those eyes open a little longer. Really enjoy the process of wanting those eyes to close. And as you sit there, and this person talks in the background, after a while, you start to wonder whether your eyes are open or closed. You're pretty sure your eyes are still open, you're still looking at that mirror. But at the same time, you feel like your eyes have closed, like you've begun to drift deeper into the experience. And then you notice that the mirrors seem to have faded away and that even those eyes in front of you begin to fade away and begin to close and fade and drift away and the voice of the person begins to fade away. And you start to hear sounds around you and everything begins to go dark at first. And then as the light begins to rise again, you find yourself lying down in a savannah You can notice the warmth of the sun. You can hear those sounds of birds. You can feel the dry grass beneath you. And you can see a lake a little way off from you. And you stand up and you walk down towards that lake. And as you walk, you look around, taking in this environment, knowing that you're still traveling deeper and deeper into your mind. Curious what healing is going on in your mind while you're here and what the purpose of here is. And as you walk, you look over at a family of elephants. You can see some of them drinking, some of them playing. Some of them spraying water over their backs, flapping their ears, cooling themselves off. And you get closer and closer, and then you stop a comfortable distance away and you just watch and observe. And with the steps that the elephants take, so you can see their feet as they strike the ground. And a short time later, you can feel the ground where you are. You can feel the subtle vibrations through the ground of the steps that they took over there. You can hear that gentle lapping of the lake on the shore. You can see other animals at this lake. All focusing on just drinking the water, washing and relaxing. And you wonder what it is that You're going to be learning here. And as you wonder that, so it's almost like time speeds up. Almost like the sun passes across the sky. The sun begins to set. The sounds change. The animals go off about their daily business. 
some go to bed. The moon rises, the stars rise. And you can see those stars in the sky. And see the occasional cloud passing across the sky. and feel a sense of stillness and calm. And you begin to explore this area. You find a cave. You set up a small fire in the cave. Make yourself that campfire. Hearing the crackling, popping of the campfire. Noticing the way the light dances on the walls. And as that light dances on the walls, so you realise there are some cave paintings here. You can see what looks like a handprint. Almost like an inverse handprint. Like someone has placed their hand on the wall of the cave. and placed some kind of paint around the hand to leave an imprint of their hand. And you instinctively lift your hand, place your hand into that handprint. And as you do, you almost get a flash of memories of times long gone. And you look around you while your hand is rested there. And you see an almost ghostly figure of cave people living in a community in this cave. You see them interacting, communicating. You see them with their fire almost like an overlaid reality, like this is a memory of a past time, almost like it was stored in the rocks of this cave. And you're seeing a ghostly version of that now. And you watch as that plays out. You watch as that family interact the children go to bed and you see one of those cave people come over to this wall. You see them mixing up some kind of paint with some water. And then getting that water, that painty water, into their mouth. And a bit like fire breathers, spraying the liquid out of their mouths to give the illusion of breathing fire. They spray at the back of their hand, exactly where your hand is. And their hand is over the top, almost like it's inside your hand. Their apparition of their hand is in the same location. And after they've done that, so it fades away and you find yourself in the cave like normal, that sound of the flickering flames of the fire, the sound of the occasional breeze blowing into the cave. And you look around the walls at what other cave art is here. And you see one bit of cave art that looks like a herd of animals. And as you go and touch that bit of cave art, so outside the cave, it becomes daylight again. But the daylight has an unusual quality. And you watch this herd of those animals, almost like apparitions of them, 
walking past the cave. And you can see inside the cave is this family looking out as that herd of animals walks past. You can see the excitement in the way that they're communicating, their non-verbal behaviours, and the sound of their voice. And you don't understand the words they're using, but you can notice that they're excited by what they're seeing. And you watch this play out all the way to when one of them comes over and paints what it is that you're touching. And then you go back to the fire. You lie down near the fire and you drift and float comfortably and relaxed asleep. And on awakening, you're surprised to see that while you were asleep, a wolf had crawled into the cave with you and had slept alongside you. And on awakening, that wolf awoke as well. And the wolf looked at you with such friendly eyes, it bowed its head. You held out your hand, palm up. You let that wolf move its nose over to your hand so that the wolf would know that you're safe and friendly. And the wolf sniffed at your hand And then it bowed its head again. You very slowly and carefully moved your hand and stroked that wolf. And it allowed you to do so. And you could feel its breathing. You could feel your fingers deep in its fur. That fur tickling between your fingers. You could feel the warmth of its body. And as you stood up, so did the wolf. And then you leave the cave and the wolf starts following. And as you continue to explore this area, you find that this wolf seems to join you on the journey. And you can think to yourself about how, at some point in the past, wolves and humans had decided that they could spend time together and built relationships. And you wondered if this was one of those moments And as you explored this area, the wolf seemed so happy to just keep up and to be your companion on this journey. And after many days of trekking from where you found yourself, many nights of camping with that wolf sticking by you. You found yourself approaching a swampy area. And you helped that wolf and that wolf helped you as you walked and navigated through the swampy area. The wolf seemed to somehow instinctively know where the best route was, almost as if it could smell the right way. And that swampy area gave way to a river. 
and you followed that river, sometimes walking through the day, other times walking at night. but all times sticking together. And that river led you all the way down to an ocean. And you set up camp on this ocean. And you realized that this location seemed very much like the location where you fell asleep. And there were some differences, as if this was this location a long time before the date you fell asleep. And the wolf stuck with you. And as you fell asleep, so you found yourself waking up again in that room of mirrors. And that person was there welcoming you back telling you that you've just been on a healing experience, that you've just met a guide that's taken you through many healing places and processes in your mind, while taking you on a journey. And this person handed you a glass, and inside that glass, was what looked like blue goo. And they said to pour that goo into your hands. And so you poured the goo into your hands. And you could feel how cool that goo was under the fingertips. And they said you just need to work that goo into a ball. And once you've worked it into a ball, it'll all stick together just right. And so you work that goo into a ball. And just as you get it all into a ball, it seems to solidify and become an orb. And it starts to glow and pulsate. And there's a hum coming from that orb and it starts to become more see-through with that blue becoming brighter and brighter almost like it's an electric blue almost like electricity is somehow within that orb like somehow the orb contains a lot of energy and you find that that orb in your hand feels like it's getting lighter and lighter and you loosen your fingers around that orb and it doesn't seem to move around much in your hand and you lift it up with your hand holding it out in front of you and then as you gently lower your hand down without your fingers holding the orb so that orb seems to just sit there floating in space in that location and you reach out again and touch the orb again and you rise it up even higher and when you let go it seems to stick exactly where you've placed it and you test this a few more times moving the orb near to you further away up down left right and wherever you place that orb, it just seems to sit there. And this person tells you that that orb contains a lot of energy and a lot of magic. And that it's got the ability from a simple touch to heal deeply within you. You just have to think about what it is that you would like healed, what you would like to change in your life, something that would involve 
alterations within you and then touch the orb and some of that blue healing energy will pass from the orb following those intentions for wellness and will then flow through you and you'll notice that any negativity any blocks will be released and any negativity will flow out of you through your feet into the ground and dissipate and that you'll remain touching the orb until suddenly you just feel this sense of letting go and at the point that you feel that sense of letting go the hand will automatically move away from the orb and you'll know all that healing is done and so you sit back you think about what it is you would like healed what it is you would like to change what it is you would like different And that person just stands there quietly beside you, allowing you the time and space to think, to process, to find what it is you would like healed. And then you reach forward, you touch the orb, and you feel that healing energy passing in through your hand into your arm, down through your body, up into your head, almost cycling round. And you have that sense, a sensation in the feet that lets you know that any blocks and negativity are dissipating out of you, being replaced with this healing and while this continues, so your eyes gently close, as if to give yourself time to just be focused on the experience of the healing. And then after a little while of being focused on the experience of the healing, you have a sense of the dissipation coming to an end. And then without any thought at all, the hand releases from the orb. And feeling deeply relaxed, you find yourself drifting back in that chair. And the person says it's time to leave they hand you back your potato, they walk you back out to the street and they tell you you can revisit here any time. You want a bit of magic, a bit of healing. And they walk you all the way back to where you can see that phone box. And they say goodbye, they head back to their stool. And as you walk up towards the phone box, you see them raising that velvet cover. And before they've even got behind the stool again, they're already in the process of selling. And you have this curious sense of deja vu while you arrive at the phone box. You can hear that phone ringing. You enter the phone box. You lift up the receiver. You put it to your ear and you can hear drumming. And as you listen to that drumming, 
you notice the changes in the drumming. Before finding yourself back in that cloud. And back in the cloud, you get asked if you've had a nice trip. And they say that we're just passing over your destination. And they tell you to drop back out that hole again. And this time when you drop, you fall down from the clouds. You see that tent. You find yourself drifting and floating comfortably into that you in the tent. And then once you land inside that you in the tent, you drift deeper and deeper asleep. You drift from a dreaming sleep into your deep recuperative sleep, the sleep that helps to heal you on a cellular level. And then in the morning, you awaken feeling so refreshed, revitalized, so full of energy and ready to get on with the day, excited about what you've got to be grateful for in the day coming up, what you've got to look forward to, what your plans are. And you remember the meteor shower the night before, You remember vaguely the dream that you had. And you have this sense that it felt almost real, yet you know it must have been a dream. And you pack everything away. You walk up off of this beach. You cut through some woodland, and as you cut through the woodland, so you can hear the rustling of the leaves as the wind blows a breeze. You can notice the way shards of light dance and shimmer. You can hear the sound of each footstep on the solid dirt ground. And then you hear this gentle chirping of a robin a little way off the path. You decide to turn off the path, walk a little bit into the woods off the path. And as you walk into the woods, it gets a little darker. And you discover that robin has its own little bird box, almost like a tiny house on the side of a tree, where whoever made this bird box had placed windows on it, had placed what looked like a door on it, even placed what looked like a chimney on it, and a slight footpath outside the door which was a little perch that the robin was resting on. And you watch as that robin sings so beautifully, with its singing almost echoing among the trees. And while you watch, you hear the sound of someone else around you. You see someone else walking through the woods, and as they get closer, you have this curious sense that you recognize them. And they acknowledge you in a friendly way. And they comment about how Robin Redbreasts don't actually have red breasts. Well, that's an interesting fact.
and you look back at the robin. And you have this sense, almost like an aha moment, or a sense of intrigue at just suddenly realizing that. Thinking how many times you've seen a robin and never really thought about it. And as you turn back to talk to that person, to tell them that you'd never really thought about that. They ask you how your potato was. They hope you liked it. They ask you if you'd like another. You say you're okay and you're curious how they would know about the potato. They ask you if you're sure. You say you're definitely okay. And they smile and say, okay then. And they put a hat on. They turn around. And they disappear back into the woods. And as they walk away, They say they'll be seeing you. And they seem to almost disappear as they walk into the woods. As if by magic. As if all of a sudden their footsteps just got quieter and quieter and quieter and then vanished. And you walk back to the path and carry on through the woods. You continue your journey home. And as you journey home, so it begins to rain. You watch as the rain passes by and the sun peeks out. And you can see the most beautiful rainbow traveling across the ground, arching through the sky. As you continue journeying home, you see deer in fields, in big open spaces, you see rabbits, you see many other animals, you pass through farmland, seeing sheep, cows, seeing some people on horseback, and you still find your mind curious, wondering and pondering the experience you'd had. Having this strange thought almost like the potato man was perhaps some kind of wizard or something, trying to work out who they were, how someone from your dreams can be in your reality. Non arrival home. You go to bed. Having made a long journey home. And it's beginning to get late at night. And you drift and float so comfortably so relaxed, asleep, sleeping so well through the night, so peacefully knowing that in the morning you will awaken feeling refreshed, revitalized and full of energy for the day, drifting, floating comfortably and relaxed, asleep.